One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Welcome to TK's Two Cents. I'm here to talk about the danger of lying to yourself and the power of starting small. So let's dive right in with today's two tweets. Tweet number one, if you want to achieve extraordinary things, you have to give yourself permission to have extraordinary desires. The first step to creating a result is admitting to yourself that you actually want that result. There's a story of a therapist. Client comes in and says, therapist, I'm lost, I'm confused, I need direction in life. Therapist says, well, what do you want? The client says, you know, it doesn't make any sense to talk about what I want because I already know that I can't have it. The therapist says, I understand where you're coming from, but I just want you to imagine for a moment that we live in a magical universe where anything's possible. I can wave a wand and make any of your desires instantaneously manifest. What would you choose to have? And the client says, well, to be honest, I love for my failing marriage to succeed. And there was a moment of silence. And after another moment of silence, the client began to cry. And then the therapist says, well, how does that feel? And the person says, you know, I know this is kind of crazy, but that's the first time in months I've admitted to myself that I actually want my marriage to succeed. And then the therapist says something very profound. The therapist says, when you limit your sense of possibility to, I'm sorry, when you limit, when you limit your understanding of what you want to your sense of possibility regarding what you can actually have, then you rob yourself of the kind of self-knowledge that you need in order to know what, what you should do with your life. Think about it this way. Let's say that you want something. Uh, it can be to be a professional musician, to have a million dollars, to have your, you know, uh, your dream home, whatever it may be. But you've convinced yourself that that's not something you can have. And so you never think about what you want. Well, even if you can't have what you want, you still want to know what the next best alternative is. And you can't figure that out unless you spend time actually being honest with yourself about what you want and digging into the reasons why you want it. Understanding what you want is something that helps you realize what your preferences are, what your priorities are, what your principles are. And those are things that are gonna be useful to you in the creative process, no matter how unrealistic it may be for you to have the thing that you want. You don't want to be like, you know, how me and my friends were when we were in high school. When we were in high school, you know, let's say one of us liked a girl, right? We liked a girl, we go up to her, ask her to go to the dance with us or ask her to go out on a date. And the girl would be, you know, like expressed that she wasn't interested. And then as a coping mechanism, we pretend like we never liked her in the first place. Oh, I never liked that girl in the first place. We, we thought there was something powerful about pretending like we didn't want the experience that we actually wanted just because we couldn't have it. But there's no power in that. The real power is being able to say, look, maybe it's possible that I can't successfully create this thing that I want but I am going to still focus on the fact that this is what I want. And I'm gonna to try to understand what this desire says about me and my priorities. And then that gives you the sense of direction that you need in order to know what to do next. And here's the other thing. Sometimes your sense of possibility is wrong. You know, we focus on this a lot when it comes to positive stuff. You know, we're always, uh, you know, sensitive to the fact or afraid of the fact or suspicious of the fact that we might be too optimistic. But it's also true that we might be too pessimistic. We might assume that just because we don't know how to get to a certain place in life, that there is no answer whatsoever for how we can get there. And if you refuse to admit what it is you want, just because you don't think it's possible, you will never be able to tap into those unanticipated, unpredictable ways to get what you want. My, uh, my friend Isaac Morehouse was telling me one time that, that there was this point in his, his, his career where he just decided he wanted to help a billion people. And he said that he kind of always felt that underneath the surface, that he wanted to help a billion people launch their careers. But there was something about the power of saying it out loud, the power of just admitting it to himself that this is what he wanted to do. And he's like, now, will I actually do it? I mean, that's a question that's gotta be answered by the work. Who knows if I'll actually do it? I'm gonna try, but there is freedom in admitting to myself that this is what I want. A lot of times when we think about dreams, we start with what's possible, or we start with trying to figure out a method or a technique that's gonna get us there. I want you to start with admitting to yourself that you actually want the result. What is that thing you want out of life? Is it something crazy, like to be an actor? 
to be a recording artist? Is it something crazy that you're afraid other people will despise, like being rich, you know, where everyone in your family, you know, looks down upon that and dismisses that as materialistic? Whatever it, whatever it may be, it's not my, not my job to judge what that is, but I want you to start with just admitting to yourself what it is you want and letting your sense of possibility unfold from that because maybe you can have it in ways that you didn't anticipate. But even if you can't, that knowledge will serve you well. Besides, it's never healthy, never healthy to lie to yourself about what you want, even if the excuse you're using to lie to yourself is, but I can't have it. It's always powerful to tell yourself the truth and then figure out how you're gonna deal with that truth. And the truth begins with what it is you want. Be true to that and just own it unabashedly, unapologetically, and move forward from there. Let's go to tweet number two. Reduce the size of your fear by reducing the size of your first step. Courage increases with competence. The better you get at something, the bolder you feel about doing it. I think about this scene in the movie, A, a Training Day, where... Um, one character's training the little girl on how to swim and she's very scared and, and, and she doesn't really know how to do it. And, and she says something like, you know, I'm just not good enough. And he's like, there is no good enough. There's either trained or untrained. Either you have put in the work necessary to learn how to do this or you have it. Everything else flows downstream from that. You know, the thing I wanna talk about this week is the fact that courage comes from competence. How do you get bold enough to do something? by becoming the kind of person who actually knows what they're doing. When you know what you're doing, you naturally feel the courage to get out there and do it. So if you don't already know how to do something though, how do you get past that catch 22? How do you get to a point where you can do it? You start ridiculously small. You size it down to something that is so easy to begin with and you increase the challenges by taking baby steps and your level of courage will increase with your level of competence. Think about it like lifting weights. Let's say you've never lifted weights before and you walk into the gym and you see that empty bar with no weights and you think to yourself, oh gosh, I don't wanna be the person seen lifting that. Everybody's gonna know that I'm weak. Everybody's gonna know that I'm the new kid, but that's the starting point for strength. You start with that bar that you can't fit any weights on and you lift that to the best of your ability and then you add a little bit more you know, every other week you add a little bit more and pretty soon you're lifting so much more, you're putting more weight on, you're getting stronger and you're getting stronger and you look back and you say, wow, look how far I've come. But you got there by starting small and adding challenges over time. A lot of times when we have these dreams or we have these things that we wanna do, we feel like in order to respect the dream that we have, we got to start really big and do this really amazing thing. I hear people say things all the time like, well, I want to be a writer, but if I really loved writing, I would do it all the time. If I really loved writing, I would write five pages a day. No, you don't get to five pages a day until you start with one paragraph a day or one sentence a day. It doesn't matter what the starting point is. It matters that you build momentum over time so that you can cross the finish lines that you want to cross. So if that means starting with a paragraph a day, starting with a sentence every day, it doesn't matter. Do what it takes to get started. You know, if you've never went, went uh, jogging before, you don't wake up one day and say, I'm gonna you know, run five miles every day or I'm gonna train for a marathon. No, just say, I'm gonna get out of the house today and I'm gonna go jog for one block today. It doesn't matter how small it is, just get started. I made a whole video about this called The Power of Non-Zero Days. Um, I, I encourage you to go check it out um, on, on, on the Revolution of One YouTube channel where I talk about the power of starting small. But when it comes to courage, don't put pressure on yourself to feel courageous. C courage is not the result of willpower. It's not the result of making yourself be bold. It's the result of starting small, building your skills over time and getting yourself to a level of competence where you say, you know what? I'm just gonna show up and do the thing. I'm gonna show up and do the thing because I put in the work to be able to do it well. But in order to do it well, you gotta be willing to do it bad at first. And the way you give yourself the courage to do it bad is by scaling it back, 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 so that you can try the thing out, so that you can start the thing without it being this big, dramatic, potentially self-destructive, embarrassing thing. Just start small. And when you start small, you'll grow strong. All right, everybody, those two tweets. I'll see y'all tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Me and Kamal will be here. The revolution will be live streamed. 
And every Tuesday and Thursday, unless I say otherwise, 12 Eastern time, TK's two cents. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great week.